So last week I challenged you all to try to model this object here and I just thought I'd make a full length video on it just since it's a little bit more of an involved process uh, so let's hop right into it. So in a new file let's just go ahead delete everything and what we'll do is we'll bring in a cylinder and just in our properties menu here let's just change the vertices to 17 and I'll explain why we do that in a second and let's just change the cap fill type to nothing just so we don't have to manually delete the top and bottom faces and we'll just push everything up by one on the z-axis. So the reason I wanted us to do 17, and technically you could do any odd amount of uh, verts for the cylinder, it's just so we have this face here, front facing when we're in orthographic view, so just pressing one on the numpad there, uh, it's just gonna make it easier for the pattern we're designing. So I'm gonna go ahead, control R, I'm gonna cut in three edge loops, select everything with A, and then using Control and F, I'm going to poke all the faces. So now we've got this going on. And then using Alt and J to convert the tries to quads, uh, we're going to get this knurling pattern. So then what I want, I want to select this top triangle here, and I just want to follow its diagonal trace of faces down. So just hold down Control and click on this bottom triangle here. Use Control I, X, and delete all of the faces. So we're just left with this strip. And so we'll select everything with A, Control F, and we'll poke the faces again, just so we can get all of the internal verts. And I'm going to select this bottom vertice here, and this one here, and then Control Shift and Plus, and that's just going to repeat our selection process. Then what we can do using Alt and S, we can sort of just give a little bit of depth to all of these, just push them in a bit. So I'll just go that much, it doesn't need to be too intense. And then Control and I, and we'll just use Shift E 0.55, and we'll just add a bit of creasing. It's not going to do anything at the moment, but when we put the subdivision surface on at the end, it will just help define all of our edges. So at the top of the design, there's a little bit of a semicircle going on, and that was intentional to try to make this a little bit more complicated. But I'll show you how we're going to handle this. So we're just going to go to the top. We'll go Shift and S, and we'll go Cursor to Selected. And we'll go ahead, bring in a circle, and just in the properties, we're just going to change the vertices from 16, uh, sorry, from 32 to 16. And we'll just rotate that 90 degrees along the X axis. And we can just select these bottom vertices here and delete those. And then I'm just going to use L to select the rest of the verts at the top here. Change the pivot point to our 3D cursor. And I'm just going to roughly scale this in just until these vertices match on the outside here. Doesn't have to be exact, I'm not too worried about it. Oops. And then I'm just going to grab the vert of the semicircle, hold down shift, select the vert of the rest of our mesh. And then I'm just gonna use M and we'll go merge at last. So making sure I select the vert of the semicircle, then of the rest of the model, M merge at last. Then holding down Alt, I can select this top row around here. Press F to fill in a face, then I just to add in a nice bit of support loop. Shift E, negative one to get rid of the internal creasing there because I don't need that. And then we'll just go around the top here, select these, Shift E, 0.55, and we'll just add some creasing to the outer edges as well. And then I'll just select the middle face, Alt, Shift, and select the outer rim. And I'm just going to do a very slight rotation out on the x-axis. I don't have a defined amount, just a little bit and that'll work nicely. Cool, so that's all we need to model for this. Well, we need to model the interior, but that's pretty easy. Um, what I'll show you now is how we'll use the array modifier to get the rest of the design going. So if we select the model that we have so far, we go Shift S, we'll go Cursor to Selected, so that will put it to our uh, geometry origin point. Shift A, and let's go ahead and bring in a plane axis. Axis, sorry. And so we'll just leave that as is for now. And then with our object again, let's go to our modifiers. Let's bring in an array modifier. And we'll change it from relative offset to object offset. And we'll set the object to our empty. And we just want to enable merge and enable the first and last copies to merge as well. So the next thing we want to do is we want to rotate our empty here because you'll notice if I rotate this along the Z axis, we start to rotate the position of the rest of the object for our array. And we could do a bit of guesswork, you know, just sort of eyeball the rotation. Uh, but I'll show you an exact way to get the rotation. So in our Z rotation, we know that we did 17 verts on our cylinder. So what we can do is we can click into the Z rotation. And we can go 360 divided by 17. 
And then once we hit enter, we get the exact amount of rotation that we need for our array. So we can just leave that alone now. And then if we come back to the array, we can just bump this all the way up to 17. And it all fits and merges perfectly because we have the exact amount of rotation. So it's kind of neat, isn't it? And we've done all that just by modeling this one strip. So then we, what I want to do is let's just go ahead and start to connect things together. I'll just change the pivot point back to our bounding box. So I'm just going to grab this vertex on the outside here, E to extrude, and pull along on the X. And so we can see that that's merged now, and it's sort of distorted everything, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to look over on the left here though, okay? And I'm just going to wait for that vert to sort of roughly line up again. Hold down shift and you can make it more precise. But see how now that sort of more conforms to the original shape we had? So that's good. And then I'm just going to pull this back on the Y a bit just until it looks like a completely flat face so I can't see any of those edges. So that looks pretty good. I think I can see just a little bit of an edge there. Yeah, that should be all right. And then we can just go ahead, fill in a face there. I know that's a triangle. It's not going to be overly problematic for what we're doing. And I'm just going to go shift E 0.55 on that edge because I know that needs to be creased up. Cool. All right. So now we pretty much have the design going. And if you wanted to make like a rocks glass, like a whiskey glass or something like that, this would be fine. Uh, but the design I was going for is more of like a pot plant vase. Um, so I kind of want to get like a bit more of a bulbous shape at the top and something a bit thinner at the bottom. And I could use proportional editing, but let's do something in a little bit more of a non-destructive manner. So I'm just going to go shift A, let's bring in another plane axis. And I'm just going to drag it up a little bit, doesn't matter how far at the moment. And then coming back to our model, let's search for a cast modifier. And I've never actually used the cast modifier up until doing this little challenge, so this is new to me as well. Uh, but let's just turn off the Z axes. We don't want it to affect the Z axes, just the X and Y. And we'll change the object to the empty 001. That's the new one that we brought in. And if we use transform at the bottom here, then when we scale in the second empty, we get a little bit more control over the design and shape that we have for the pot here. So we can scale it out or bring it further up, however you see fit. So I'm just going to go somewhere around there. I think I'm happy with that. Cool. And once you're happy with the placement of it, you can just go ahead and apply. I'm just going to apply the array. I'm just going to leave the cast so that if I do feel like changing it afterwards, I can. And I'm just going to go ahead and go shade smooth. Actually, I should do that properly. Object uh, shade smooth. And I'm going to check on a subdivision surface modifier and I'm going to bump this up to four. Probably a bit excessive, but it just helps you see where those creases are. And I'm just going to turn that off for the time being because I know it's going to make the next step a little bit sluggish otherwise. Uh, so I just held down Alt to select the top row of edges there. Just go E to extrude, bring up along the Z axes, and then S, Z, and 0 to scale along 0 along the Z axes. Cool. So it's a little bit bumpy here at the moment. So what I'm going to do is just using the loop tools, uh, edit, loop tools. I'm just going to use the circle operation. And you'll notice all the edges are a bit skewed now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just looking at this middle edge here. I'm just going to adjust the angle until it roughly looks straight. So if you wanted a better reference, we could go into wireframe mode and zoomed in very far here. This isn't necessary. Uh, but you could use the Z axis marker as a way to get it completely straight. So that seems to work well there. And then just a final little step, I'm just going to turn the subdiv back on here just to make it easier to see. I'm just going to scale everything out a bit just to try to reduce some of the pinching that we're getting in here uh, from that triangle. So I might just go somewhere around there. Still not absolutely perfect, but for the design that we're trying to go for, this is pretty well good enough. And can't see the cast modifier in edit mode. So yeah, there we go. Now we've got the design. And I'm just going to turn off the subdiv again. And what we can do is just go ahead. I might just enable the cast modifier in edit mode. So shift E negative, whoops, shift E negative one to remove the creasing. And then shift E 0.55 just because we were missing some of the creased edges there. Then extrude, scale in. And then extrude. 
extrude and we'll just bring it down and then we'll scale it in to just do the interior of the vase if I just to add a support loop in the middle I might just do another one as well and then I'm gonna do control R I'll bring a loop up to the top to support the uh, inner edge and then control R and push one down to support the bottommost edge there and then we'll just go F at the bottom here to fill in the bottom face, I to insert, Shift A, negative 1, and I to insert again. And turn the subdiv back on. Just take a second. There we go. We've got the design. And with the cast modifier still on, we can still adjust where we sort of want the shape to be and how we wish to change it. I think it looks just a little bit better at the top there. Um, but yeah, there you go. It looks a little bit complicated with the knurling pattern all around it and, you know, the uh, semicircles at the top. I actually wanted to scale those down, but I completely forgot. Um, but yeah, that's how you do it. That's at least one approach. I'm sure there's other ways of doing it. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that helps you guys out.